Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in today's Gospel, Jesus asks the chief priests and elders which of the two sons did their father's will. The son who initially agreed to go to the vineyard and work but did not go, or the one who initially refused but changed his mind and went to the vineyard. The chief priests and elders said it was the son who initially said no but changed his mind who did their father's will. To Jesus, this son was like the tax collectors and prostitutes who turned away from their sinful ways after recognizing John the Baptist's call to repentance. In truth, brothers and sisters, there are two changes of mind and heart in the gospel. One to disobey, another to obey God. Let us reflect on how we change our mind and heart every time we respond to God. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed, he does what is right and just. He shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The Word of the Lord i
second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Redirecting One's Life Our readings for today are very rich in spiritual and uh, even uh, personal uh, gems so that we could redirect our lives. Change is constant. But we have to evaluate what type of change are we embracing. Not every change leads to life, fullness of life. And so I want to address this especially to the young people who are quite impatient. They want change instantly. Yes, we appreciate that passion for change, but let us pause. Let us also examine how do we reorient our lives to positive change? In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, it seems that Israel was complaining to God in one specific aspect, which is how God deals with people who have changed their ways. But God says, look, when a person who claims to be virtuous, just, loving, suddenly reorients his or her life towards one of iniquity, evil. Now that person has redirected his or her life towards death. That's one way of redirecting one's life. And it is a redirection that does not make life more productive. It leads even to a deterioration or a loss of life. Whereas, God says, if you have someone who has realized that he or she has been living a life of sinfulness, of injustice, of corruption, and with a decisive move redirected one's life towards virtue, towards goodness, justice, truth, and love, God says, that person is pleasing to me. That person has chosen to move away from death to life. My dear brothers and sisters, change is constant. 
But we have to decide what type of change we will embrace. And the redirection of the will, the redirection of one's life, must consider, you know, is my end goal leading to true life, something that will enhance my being a true person, a good citizen of society, or is my redirection leading me to iniquity? In the second reading, St. Paul tells the Philippians to consider a redirection of life, to change positively. From a life of rivalry, competition, which is rooted in a sense of superiority, I am superior to the rest of you, said, which breeds no, not only in the community of the Philippians, but in our daily experience, we know how this type of attitude no, breeds division. No, the prejudice that puts myself above the others while stepping down on others, this does not create no, a life in the community that is life-giving. So St. Paul is telling the Philippians, redirect your lives, not only for your own sake, but for the sake of the community. Instead of rivalry, conceit, pride, a false sense of superiority, go the other way. Be kind to one another. Be uh, forgiving to one another. And, oh, the most important redirection of one's life Put on Christ. The attitude that we find in Christ should guide our redirection. And what was the attitude of Christ? Though he was God, though he was the Son of God, though he was divine, he chose in obedience to God the Father and out of love for us, he chose the path of humility. He humbled himself. He shed off, as it were, his divinity and took on human flesh. He embraced the human condition. That is an act of humility. That is a wow, a redirection of life, which is quite for us, using our worldly norms, a demotion. But for him, no. It is a redirection of life which is leading to salvation. Salvation by embracing the human condition. And who embraces the human condition? The divinity. And he even embraced death. Death on the cross. Dying as a lowly criminal. And he waited for God to give him the name above every other name. So that when the name of Jesus is mentioned, everyone should bow. What a redirection of life that Jesus presents to us. Now, will the Philippians redirect their lives according to Jesus' attitude? The question is posed to us. Change is constant. But what type of change will we pursue? Let us redirect our lives, putting on the mind and the heart of Christ. of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What do you think of this case? There was a man who had two sons. He approached the elder and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son replied, I am on my way, sir. But he never went. 
Then the man came to his second son and said the same thing. This son said in reply, No, I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Which of the two did what the father wanted? They said, The second. Jesus said to them, Let me make it clear that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came preaching a way of holiness, you put no faith in him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did believe in him. Yet even when you saw that, you did not repent and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord redirecting one's life. This is the theme that we have been developing in our reflection on our Sunday readings. As I've said a number of times, reflecting on the first and second readings for today, change is constant, but change is something that we choose. So there is a change in one's life where we are leading ourselves sometimes to what the first reading calls death. You're already in a virtuous path, but somewhere along the line, you decide to redirect your life towards a path of iniquity, and so you have really chosen death. But the prophet Ezekiel points to another direction. Those who have realized that they have been living in iniquity, but then they say, this is not what I want. So they redirect their lives to one of virtue, then they have chosen the path of life. In the second reading, St. Paul invites the Philippians as a community, not just as individuals, but as a community, to reconsider their lives and redirect their lives according to the mind of Jesus. The community should move away from conceit, the Subsense of superiority, pride, that causes division. No? If they put on Christ, if their attitude will, is redirected towards the attitude of Christ, then they will live in kenosis, self-emptying. Even the divine uh, prerogatives of Jesus, he freely, no, freely let go in order to be human, in order to save us. And then God gave him the name above every other name. So St. Paul is telling us, redirect your lives according to the example of Jesus Christ. In the Gospel from St. Matthew, Jesus directs a parable to the chief priests and the elders. So these are the religious leaders of the time. Now try to imagine these religious, social, cultural, and even civic leaders. Try to imagine their sense of superiority, their sense of self-worth, and how they were quite sure of their standing not only before the community, but before God, because they were experts. They considered themselves experts in the Word of God, in the liturgical life of the community, and even in the the legal or social lives of the people. Now, looking, please remember, this parable is directed to the chief priests and the elders. Jesus' parable is quite simple. Now, a father uh, calls his two sons. The elder son uh, said yes to the father, who had directed them to go to the farm, to work in the vineyard. The elder son said, yes, I will go. Ah, but we don't know why. In the middle of the process, he redirected He redirected his will and his action. He did not go. The second son said the father, no, 
I will not go. I don't want to go to the vineyard. But again, we do not know. Somewhere along the line, he realized something and he redirected his life. He went to the vineyard and worked. Now, Jesus asked the chief priests and the, and the elders, who of the two brothers did the will of the father? Look at that. That's very specific. Who did the will of the father? Both the sons had their own wills. And we could see that both sons changed their wills. But in the end, who redirected their wills to obey the father's will? And they were right. They said, the second son, who initially said, no, I will not go. But in the end, redirected his action towards the vineyard. He changed his will to harmonize with the will of the Father. So, I think we all understand that. Redirecting one's life in order to fulfill the will of the Father. Now, Jesus uses this parable to make the chief priests and the elders aware of their own need for redirection. For he tells them, you are like no, the elder son. You claim that you are obedient to God the Father. You claim to be even the interpreters of the will of the Father. But then John the Baptist came calling everyone to a path of holiness, which means conversion. Confess your sins. But you did not believe in him. You did not redirect your lives to follow the word of God spoken through John the Baptist. Whereas the tax collectors, the prostitutes, who are like the second son, living a life of iniquity, they heard the teaching of John the Baptist and they redirected their lives. They believed, they repented. So who did the will of God? Of course, the chief priests and the elders felt insulted. <laughs> but this is a lesson to us, dear brothers and sisters. This is in line with what Ezekiel already said in the first reading and what St. Paul tells us in the second reading. Let us check ourselves. Let us avoid the attitude of the chief priests and the elders who, maybe through no fault of their own, but because of their position, they thought that they were already established. They thought that they were just, righteous. They thought that their expertise already made them you know, true followers of God. And because of that, there is no more need for conversion. No, there is always a need for conversion. Let us be humble. Let us be like Christ. Let us put on Christ. And with humility, always listen to John the Baptist and the many people God sends to us, calling us to review our lives and to redirect our lives to the fulfillment of God's will. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. October is a month devoted to Our Lady, especially in relation to the Holy Rosary. It gives us an opportunity to reflect and to celebrate. The Rosary, through its mysteries, teaches us how Mary is both a mother to Jesus and a teacher of faith to all of us. This month, our series will look into this aspect, Mary as mother and teacher and the gospel of each Sunday will serve as springboard for our reflection. In today's gospel, we are presented with two sons, 
each changed his mind and heart about his initial response to their father, who had called them to work at their vineyard. The Annunciation story clearly shows us how Mary positively responded when God called her to work in his vineyard as Theotokos, the bearer or mother of the Lord, in whose womb God's word was made flesh. Did she ever have a change of mind and heart? We can say that Mary remained faithful to her fiat, her yes to God, when she followed Jesus, stood at the foot of his cross at Calvary, and stayed with the disciples even after the resurrection and the descent of the Holy Spirit, which gave birth to the church. One way of understanding Mary's unchanged mind and heart towards God is through her Magnificat. Let us look at this part of her canticle. Mary recognized that the good she was experiencing was due to God's greatness and mercy. It was never due to who she was or what she did. And she looked at it as part of God's promise of help and salvation to the people of Israel. Mary had no, as the youth would say today, main character syndrome. She was not self-centered. She was open to collaborating with God and His people. And what was the result of this? Humility. Mary's faith and humility provided a solid ground to her fiat, so her yes remained yes throughout her life. Now, you might ask, Cardinal, was there a favored person in the Bible who changed negatively? Yes, we can take King Uzziah as an example. He was king of Judah for 52 years, and the Bible tells us he did what was right in God's eyes who made him prosper. Unlike Mary, who perceived God's favor with humility, Uzziah became proud. The Bible says, During that time, offering incense to God was carried out by Levitical priests only. They were consecrated to do so. But Uzziah, too full of himself, thought that as king, he could do whatever he pleased. And for overstepping his authority, God afflicted him with leprosy, a reversal of the favor he had enjoyed. So from these stories, brothers and sisters, one thing is sure, humility makes our fiat steady, while pride makes it shaky. May we learn from Mary, our mother and teacher. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we guide the youth to choose to change their hearts for God? Papano natin magagabayan ang mga kabataan na piliing baguhin ang kanilang mga puso, pero para sa Diyos. The second point is, what are the social and cultural forces that constrain us to change just to fit in? Ano yung mga puwersa sa lipunan na sa kultura na pinipili tayong magbago para lang maging in? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. 
Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Sing hop, sing hop, na ba.